She is Anita Bagno. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bernie. I'm doing great. Welcome, Ian. Good to have you. Good to have you, too, Anita. Nice to hear your voice. It's been a while with all the COVID stuff. Uh, I haven't had a chance to see you or talk to you in a while. Right. Yeah, it's been an interesting. We're going on a year now, but uh, things have been happening downtown. Um, despite COVID, and we, we are very hopeful for the future. Indeed. Let's talk about maybe some of some goals, some of the outlook for the future for downtown Lafayette. What can you tell us? Sure. So uh, I said at the Advocates Outlook a few weeks ago, uh, the new uh, pivot of 2020, you know, that word, that oh, keyword, yeah. cautiously optimi- optimistic is uh, 2021's word, or words, I guess you could say. Um, but we're we're excited about what's happening downtown. You know, we had uh, about 20 new businesses open in 2020, um, which is amazing. Or, you know, people relocate to the district, people like Keen Miller, mm-hmm. uh, who like located in the Chase Tower, along with Jones Walker. So we've got two international law firms uh, over in, in downtown Lafayette. Um, and we had a lot of retail open, you guys, and it was it was weird because, you know, we're in a pandemic, but people are taking risks and opening retail. And so we are excited about that news. Uh, last week, I know you guys saw that uh, the Don's property was purchased by a local development yeah. group. They have a right. lot of big plans for retail and a lot of space to work with. I don't think a lot of people realize, but we're talking about the building where Don's was, the parking lot immediately behind it with the overhang. And then also the parking lot across the street at Lee and Vermillion. So lots of space to work with. We are seeing real estate really start to move downtown. Uh, the building next to that dog, uh, it was formerly BED Bed uh, nightclub, um, has been purchased and is being renovated right now. It's going to be white boxed into two 2,500 square foot spaces. Uh, that's the demand we're kind of seeing right now. 2,500, sub 2,500, smaller retail, um, people who are uh, – you know, working at farmers markets who are ready for that brick and mortar. Um, so you're going to hear another announcement this week about a retailer choosing downtown Lafayette. I started talking to her when I started this job two years ago. She's finally ready to make the move. She's found the right spot. So we are hopeful that that trend will continue. And that's really great daytime activity outside of office activity. So it brings new people to the district, new feet on the sidewalks. And it's great for when visitors come to Lafayette. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, Anita, with the old federal courthouse complex, the old open channel building and the old police station. Uh, And to see the pictures that Leslie Westbrook took for the advocate, to see how much progress has been made is nothing short of amazing. Where do those projects stand right now? Uh, Any idea who might be moving in and if so, when? So uh, I can answer the first question. Uh, Where it stands right now is this month is going to transition to construction phase. So it took a long time to remediate the building. There was a lot of um, issues with the building because it had been vacant for so long. Mm -hmm. And so last year there was a lot of work put in to get us to this point where we could start construction downtown um, on the property on the various uh, pieces of the property. And we are shooting for, I say we, the developers, I, I like to use the collective we, yeah. we're together, but There's nothing the wrong with the royal we. Yeah, for, yeah a, a mid-December um, date to get their uh, certificate of occupancy, which means that folks will hopefully start to move in uh, right around the new year in 2022. You can see that they're they're really shooting for those young professionals. They're one-bedroom units, which is what we've seen move with Vermilion Moss, uh, the first mixed-use development in downtown Lafayette in, in many years. Um, those one-bedrooms are really what would be moving. And so they're putting their focus there, the old federal courthouse group, and uh, they do developments in other communities as well. And that's where they've seen the most success. So, Ian, you can think about, you know, uh, college students, uh, new graduates, people working in the tech sector. We've got a lot of young professionals working downtown, people starting businesses, as I mentioned, people moving their businesses to downtown. So it's really going to be for that crowd, that group. And they've got a lot of great retail in the immediate vicinity that will create that live, work, play lifestyle that people who choose to live downtown, you know, that's really what they're that's really what they're paying for. That's what they're shooting for. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing it. uh, And the collective is right. I mean, that is a good thing. You know, we're all moving forward, I think, with this community and with downtown. So as we're summing up today uh, with you, Anita, for those who have not been experiencing downtown, they need to just throw on a mask and go down there and see all the great stuff that that's offered downtown. There's a lot of variety. 
Absolutely. So we say mask up downtown and uh, you can do lots of great things. Grab a bite with your family. We've got the awesome Children's Museum. Uh, for adults, we've got uh, a wine shop. You know, we've got a number of bars. We've got a record store, a skate shop, a bookstore. You know, lots of great things that you may not have realized happened because 2020 was so hectic. But as I mentioned, a number of awesome businesses have opened. We've got some staples like Dwyer's Cafe where you can grab a great breakfast or lunch with your family. Um, it's a really great time to be in downtown Lafayette and we encourage people that's one of the other things Bernie and Ian that we're focused on this year support small businesses in any way you can in any way you feel comfortable and you financially can please come support these local businesses they're working their tails off and they want to contribute to this community and they need your help amen yeah amen thank you for your time this morning great update thanks good to see you guys see you and I'll uh, talk to you soon. All right. See you it's later, Rita. <laughs> All right. So we'll have to make a trip uh, downtown after we go and get our uh, Petroleum Club buffet fried chicken today. Absolutely. You and I have a date. Yes, we do. All right. I'm liking it. Hey, a mixture of sun and clouds today. Another cool one. High temperature at 58, partly cloudy for tonight, a low at 35, and then definitely a little bit warmer tomorrow with more sunshine in the forecast for the middle of the week. On Wednesday, our afternoon high at 63 degrees. Right now, we're at what? 33. Huh? 33 degrees. It's so cold outside, Bill mm-hmm. Jefferson's bearing his money. <laughs> nice. Oh, gosh. All right. And as Ian told us earlier, and it's up on our KPL mobile app, Punks and Tawny Phil saw his shadow. Keep your coat out. Yep. You'll Seems need like. it for at least another six weeks. Yep.